I mean, at this point in time last year, we were wondering on how to go about I think we lost him. I mean, of course, whenever five or six people. Sorry, Atita, your signal seems to be quite weak. The joys of technology. Yeah, I think uh, we might want to ask him to reconnect. That's right. I'll just with... send him a quick note. Yeah. So we uh, lost you. Um... Am I back? G, you're, you're back. back. Okay, okay. So by the grace of God, uh, none of that happened. We sort of more or less sailed into uncharted but very positive waters. Uh, lots of thinking was uh, put into place. Uh, new ideas floated, uh, new methods of getting uh, children involved uh, and so on. And I'm sure somebody will talk about that. So uh, all in all, um, feeling, uh, how should I say, more positive about the future and about this beautiful fraternity that is uh, those who support and manage uh, TCF. So with these words, it's uh, back to Nasrullah to learn uh, what he has for us today. Fantastic, thank you so much, Atita, uh, for those uh, words. Um, and thank you again for everyone who has just joined. Um, if I can just hand over to Ziasar, who will go through the uh, Ramadan uh, narrative um, and answer any questions that you may have about uh, the coming month um, and really uh, explain what TCF has done over the last year during, the, uh, during COVID uh, and the months that followed. Ziasar, thank you. Thank you, Nasrullah. Um, Salam alaikum, everyone. And really, I think uh, to say that we are meeting to discuss the Ramzan narrative is an excuse. I think it's just lovely to, you know, to reconnect. Um, last night, late last night, we were in a similar call with folks from all over the U.S. And I can tell you, I mean, I hadn't seen some of those faces for almost a year. Um, sometimes we just uh, get used to saying the TCF family, the TCF family, but the fact is that uh, we work extremely closely together and not being able to interact uh, with each other, with the chapter leaders, with some of the volunteers. Um, it's been an isolating kind of year and, and uh, it's lovely to, to see some of you guys again. Uh, what I will do very quickly is try and take you through what the last year um, has been uh, since we last sort of used to get together on these calls when we were just planning our COVID response, when we were running it, what has this year been doing since then? And, and I will very quickly tell you where we find ourselves today in Pakistan, in the TCF network, and what are we doing to address some of the more immediate challenges we're facing today. So bear with me as I try to negotiate with technology and share my presentation with you. Uh, can I, Nasrullah, can I get a thumbs up if you can see my screen? Okay, great, super. So, so um, really uh, no news here about how deeply and, and um, dramatically um, this, this pandemic has really affected both lives and livelihoods, right? And, and uh, very quickly we realized that we had to do stuff to help um, the families, the communities which we call home where our schools are operating and you know whose kids uh, are sent to our own schools these um these communities needed our immediate support so uh, with all of your help we launched uh, what was quite an unprecedented effort in providing immediate relief to these families 
And Alhamdulillah, we were able to reach more than 45,000 families in the space of a few weeks and deliver more than 110 million rupees worth of relief. Uh, and the most remarkable part, as far as I'm concerned, was that the speed and the effectiveness of this whole exercise was driven by our own staff and our own alumni. So these are the 45,000 amazing alumni who uh, still live in and around our communities. And they were the ones who were quickly mobilized and told us where those families and individuals are who truly need our help. And if you see uh, the images which reached us um, from the ground, you can see our alumni, both boys and girls, really uh, doing this in a very dignified way. I think dignity was a big aspect of the way in which we were able to help. Uh, we didn't have a truck rolling into the community with relief, uh, you know, goods being thrown out uh, to clamoring people. We had a very personal, intimate way of reaching out. Um, there is a term that we use in Pakistan called Sufayat Poshi, which is the quality of, of uh, maintaining your dignity and your, uh, and your space and your place in society. So we were able to respect that even while we were helping these families. And, and, and I'm truly, truly uh, excited by the prospect of these young men and women um, as they play this role in their communities over the years and decades to come. Uh, we supported uh, a lot of um, healthcare workers on the front line in the early days of the pandemic especially in towns where the media glare and the attention from the public was uh, not to be found. So we were able to go to the smaller hospitals in the smaller towns and deliver some much needed help. More than 20,000 PPE kits uh, were distributed to around 34 hospitals and healthcare centers around the country, but mostly in the smaller cities and towns around the, around the country. And we went into uncharted territory. Uh, I think for many of the folks who are involved in program design in TCF, and this was uh, sort of the, the exciting part for them as well. Uh, we launched a TV program, which included entertainment, which included um, you know, activities, exercise, storytelling, and also a fair bit of academic content. And we were able to uh, reach as many or more than 6 million viewers every week. And I have to tell you, if you go through uh, the corridors in TCF today, you'll find people who are wondering, is this something that we can possibly scale um, when we are in peacetime again? Is this something that could serve as a truly uh, you know, um, significant medium to reach out across this vast geography with, uh, which we call home and across the uh, all the challenging kind of uh, landscape that we find ourselves dealing with. So um, I would not be surprised if TV, uh, TV became a part of a more strategic, more uh, core, um, you know, uh, stable of activities for TCF in the time to come. And, and as you can see, uh, this, was, this was put together in a couple of weeks with ourselves, our own content, as well as a lot of partners who uh, gladly shared their content with us and we were able to put this together. Uh, we also launched a magazine and this magazine is still going out every fortnight. Um, and we thought it was going to be a fairly minor part of our uh, efforts. But if you talk to folks in the schools today, the principals, the teachers, as well as the parents, they would probably cite the magazine as one of the most important element of our post COVID response, because that, um, whether consciously or not, turned out to be the reason, the basis, the excuse for teachers to connect with parents, to connect with students, and to continue the conversation around education through those uh, truly lonely, isolated months, right? Um, and and um, I think it allowed parents to, uh, to engage their, student, their children in a productive activity where otherwise they were just very difficult for them to manage and they were going all over the place in terms of um, you know not being able to focus on anything positive uh, and I think really again this magazine taught us what is possible with our students within our own communities and beyond as well. 
and you can see some of the ways in which kids were truly excited by and engaging with the content in the magazine. But really, one of the things that we keep hearing the most about is the way in which we did what we thought was absolutely natural and normal, which is to stand by our faculty, our staff members through these times of uncertainty. Um, the thoughts did cross the mind. They were voiced and, and uh, questions were asked and suggestions were given about whether you know, we should save uh, our expenses, we should cut down on payroll. Uh, and unanimously, I think in all those conversations, it was decided that our biggest resource, our most valuable resources are trained um, faculty. And we must not only sustain them for the reason of the functioning organization, but also stand by them in a time when so little else is certain in their lives. Um, and I want to very quickly share with you, if I could, again, a test for my techni technical abilities, a very quick snippet of, um, of what, it me what it meant to uh, one of our teachers. Just give me one second. घर में भी मिर्मिया की भी जॉब खत्म हो गई थी और वो भी घर पर थे दो ढाई माँ वो भी घर पर रहे और सिर्फ मेरी ही सैलरी आ रही थी उसी पर हमारा गुजारा चल रहा था किराए का हमारा घर था उसका किराया घर का खर्चा वो बिल हम इसकी बहुत परेशानी घर में बहुत टेंशन थी इस चीज़ की लेकिन इस बात का भी डर था कि कहीं डी की कहीं मेरे स्कूल की सैलरी जो है वो बंद ना कर दी जाए कहीं टीचर्स फारग ना कर दी जाए इस बात का बहुत खौफ था दिल पर लेकिन शुक्र अल्हम्दुलिल्लाह मेरे इदारे ने कोई ऐसा काम नहीं किया तो मेरी सैलरी मुझे प्रॉपर मिलती रही और मेरा घर भी चलता रहा जिसकी वजह से मेरी काफ़ी काफ़ी ज़्यादा जो है मतलब हेल्प मुझे मिली और मेरी परेशानी बहुत कम हुई So, with apologies to anyone who couldn't understand the Urdu there, but let me just very quickly um, share what she was saying. Basically, she was saying that you know these these were days of true true uncertainty and fear um, about um, her, her husband's livelihood and her own uh, salary and her own job with TCF, and she was gratified and and uh, truly grateful. For the organization having stood by her uh, through those tough times, I think some things like this really survive um, crisis times, and they they go on to serve as uh, culture-forming events for years and years to come. Um, and I want you all to know that your um, help and support in providing the financial resources were critical in enabling us to be able to take decisions like this because beggars can't be choosers if we didn't have the money we wouldn't be able to uh, to do what we did as management uh, and that leads us to where we leads us to where we are today right um, how the volume um sorry could i ask everyone to please put themselves on mute uh, so that um, we could uh, follow follow um, this conversation um so really i think this is not news to you, but but I think in the earlier part of uh, the pandemic and its uh, and the ensuing lockdown, we weren't really clear on how this this crisis was going to pan out and affect education, and and the way in which it does affect education is really quite. So not only are the kids being pushed, um, the good uh, idea. For everyone to please mute themselves. Thank you. Um, so not only are the kids being pushed into child labor, uh, which otherwise would not have been part of their day, uh, simply because of the economic challenges that the family is facing. Uh, young girls are facing the prospect of an early marriage, which becomes an economic decision for some of these struggling families. Um, but even if this was not a challenge, the schools that these kids are going to, uh, um, they are not sometimes not there to receive them anymore. Um, so, so the you know we've we've looked at some of this data. Some of the 
real experts out there identify Pakistan as ground zero for for the extent to which this pandemic will affect education and school, um, you know, uh, dropouts, uh, you know, the incidence of school dropouts. Um, Save the Children cited Pakistan as one of the 12 countries at extreme risk of facing learning inequalities and school dropouts. And very recently, in October 2020, the World Bank in Pakistan estimated that as many as a million children, additional children, are expected to drop out from primary and secondary education in Pakistan. This report cited Pakistan as the country most affected in relative terms, in terms of education from the pandemic. So why is it that Pakistan is most, so deeply affected by this crisis? Part of the reason is that 42% of the children enrolled in schools in Pakistan actually go to private schools. And families are unable to pay the fees for those private schools if they're themselves struggling to put food on the table. So on one side, it's the inability to pay private schools fees and private schools occupy, you know, constitute such a large percentage of school enrollment in the country. You know, anecdotally, it's not even, these are official figures, anecdotally in, uh, in cities like um, Karachi, as much as 60, 70, 80% of enrollment could be in private schools. And, and you know, on the other side, if fees are not getting uh, paid to private schools, then how do they make payroll payments? How do they make rent payments? As a result, the All Pakistan Private Schools Federation estimates that 15% of private schools may go under and may not survive this pandemic. So you can imagine uh, the, you know, the layered impact of the pandemic that even if you can pay the fees, the school itself may disappear overnight. TCF clearly has a role to play in addressing this crisis. So we're doing three things um, as we speak. Uh, schools are supposed to reopen in July, August, but the first thing is obviously we're trying to our best to retain the schools already, uh, the students already enrolled in our schools. The second is to see if we can expand the capacity uh, in our schools um, and, and see if we could create more seats uh, for, for a greater enrollment. And the third is to really reach out and enroll the private schools, dropouts, the kids who are uh, finding themselves unable to go to private schools because of either inability to pay fees or simply because the school going out of business. So already the principals, our principals and teachers have been empowered to reduce and even waive fees to facilitate payments. The guiding principle is that money should not be a reason for any family to have to pull their child out of school, out of a TCS school. And, and therefore not only is this policy been changed, but these principals and teachers are going out into the community and making sure that kids who are not turning up at school, the reason should, for that should not be because they, their families cannot pay fees. The second bit is that we are trying to see between now and August this year, if we can have a great Ramzan, if we can raise enough financial resources, we would like to maximize the number of afternoon shifts that we open this year so as to create more capacity for um, for more school of uh, students to be enrolled. You know, somebody asked this amazing question last night about what are we doing with class sizes? And already in many of our classes, we have had to increase the class, class size beyond the uh, 36 um, kids in secondary and beyond the 30 kids in primary to, you know, as much as 35 in primary. Sometimes it's a shade lower than 40. And it's becoming a concern already because this obviously and beyond a point certainly affects quality of education as well. And the third element obviously is for our staff, for our team members to reach out and identify families and children who are struggling to stay in school, uh, to stay in private schools and actually draw them into uh, TCS schools if we still have capacity. So this three-pronged approach is very, uh, very much in practice even as we speak and our success depends partly on our staff and their ability to do this outreach and partly on our financial capability to be able to waive the fees, to be able to pay for the new afternoon shifts and so on. So I wanna clearly sort of tell you that this is not just sort of talk and, and stories uh, which are being sort of written up in, in our own organization. These are the stories that we are hearing from the ground and we are just sharing with you. Um, this is Mariam. 
Mariam is a student in um, in one of our schools. Her father is a is a daily wage earner, but her mother is confined to a bed rest due to paralysis. And um, when the pandemic hit, you can imagine they were in a financial crisis. And her elder sister, who is 14 years old, had to be married off hastily to ease some of the financial burden. So the entire burden of managing the house to care for the mother fell on Marim. And it was only after a teacher, Miss Sania, realized that Marim was not attending school, that she reached out to talk to Mariam's father to understand the circumstances they were in. Uh, she was able to reduce the fees that Mariam's parents had to, uh, Mariam's family had to pay. But she also did something very special. She allowed Mariam to attend the school uh, and follow a flexible timetable uh, so that she could balance the, the duties she had at, in, in terms of managing the home and also her academic journey. And that kind of flexibility in terms of financial flexibility, as well as flexibility in, in school timings, is something we've been able to use and we've had to use to retain some of these kids who are facing an impossible situation otherwise. This is Ikra. Um, you see Ikra here um, as she works in, in a home as a domestic worker. Ikra is all of 10 years old and she's a student of class five uh, in our school in Basti Chan, in Muzaffargarh in Punjab. And, uh, you know, her time is spent in school. And as soon as she's done with school, she quickly has to change and go out to do her job, which takes her almost till dark. And uh, once it is dark, she cannot go back home because uh, there's hardly any electricity back home. So she goes to her chacha's house, her uncle's house, where she does her homework. It's only late at night that Ikra is, a, is able to come back home and go off to school, uh, go off to sleep exhausted. Ikra is in class five. As I said, she's 10 years old. And, you know, despite all of this, Ikra is able to wake up in the next morning and come to school with this smile. Um, Ikra is doing everything she can to sustain her journey in the school, as well as her duties in supporting her family, which are falling on her shoulders far too early in life. Um, and Ikra and girls like Ikra need all the help they can get from, from TCF and from our larger community. It was only after her principal, Ms. Nida Akhtar, was able to reach out to her family that she was able to reduce her fees and ensure that you know, the conversation with the family existed and, and they, engaged, they were engaged to uh, send Ikra to school despite all her other responsibilities. I want to share, you, share with you one other story. Um, this boy you see in the pink uh, shalwar kameez, his name is Mushtaq, and this family lives in Mirpur, Sankuru, and Sin. Um, Mushtaq's father that you see in the picture today uh, is a daily wage worker. And his roughly, his, his daily income was about 300 rupees, which is less than $2 a day. But as soon as the lockdown happened, that, that earning stream completely dried up um, and, and they were driven into debt. If that wasn't enough, last year, Sindh saw an unprecedented, le unprecedented level of rain and uh, this family lost their home to the ensuing uh, you know, uh, situation. And therefore, you, they, were, they were driven out and into this little hut, that this makeshift dwelling that you see around them. And, and this is where um, you know, they were when the academic session resumed and schools reopened. Mushtaq and his brother are both enrolled in the TCF school nearby. But um, when schools reopened, they didn't show up. And Nighat Parveen Saiba, who you see here, our principal, uh, she didn't waste any time and reached out to the family and understood from her uh, Mushtaq's father that, you know, it was impossible for him uh, to, to think of sending Mushtaq to school. She persisted in engaging with him uh, to obviously provide for the fee waiver, but also provide for the circumstances in terms of timing to be able to draw Mushtaq back to school. It takes so much 
for kids like Mustang to get to school. You have to have uh, this, you have to almost win this lottery of having a TCF school nearby and uh, having the ability in your family to be able to afford uh, sending you uh, in terms of time, you know, the, the opportunity cost of this kid's time uh, for the family to be able to bear that opportunity cost and send the kid to school. So for that, all those chances to happen and then for those dreams to be lost is a particular tragedy. Uh, Mushtaq is now happily back in school. He's resumed his academic journey. And I wanted to share with you this picture as well. This is the sixth member of Mushtaq's family. She is Mushtaq's grandmother. And I want you to imagine for a moment how many generations um, of dreaming and hoping um, does it take for circumstances to allow somebody like Mushtaq to go to school. Um, this, regardless of the desperation in their circumstances, of the hopelessness around them, uh, these kids uh, represent the hope that our next generation will at least see a life better than we have. And it is a particular tragedy if we allow um, events like the pandemic or floods or anything like this disturb what is really an intergenerational uh, dream from being fulfilled. So I want you to remember uh, this family when we go out in Ramzan uh, this year. Uh, it's family like these who are in our communities in and around TCF schools, um, but are finding the last inch uh, of uh, distance too much to cover. And that is where we must reach out our hands and allow them to jump across um, this uh, seemingly impossible um, you know, chasm, which, which is the incidence of poverty in their lives. Um, it is something which is within our reach and within their reach as well. And with your help, we will inshallah be able to bring thousands of children um, back into school where they truly belong, where they have every right to be. Um, so with that, I will just pause here and uh, request Nasrida to take it forward. Thank you so much, Zia Saab, uh, for those stories. And I think, you know, it's something that we can all relate to because these are everyday, uh, you know, stories. These are stories from the ground, you know, in terms of what's happening, you know. And I think at this point, I just want to uh, take the opportunity to to really share share with everyone. And I know that we have the team from Pakistan joining and some of you were actually involved in uh, collating some of these stories. We have donor services joining from Pakistan. We have the retail team, the premium team, but then we have, you know, our global family, you know, from the UAE, from the UK, uh, from uh, Norway, um, and of course, Italy. And welcome to uh, the newest member, uh, Marta, who has just joined, uh, no, sorry, Martina, uh, who has just joined us to today uh, uh, to the family. And I think what is important is that we realize that we're all in this together, that we're trying to really showcase the message of uh, the uh, like, like of the students and of the uh, children. At the end of the day, it is about the children of why we're here and why TCF does the work that we do. Um, so from so from myself and I know from the management, I know that each and every one of you have been really been involved uh, in developing the campaign over the last couple of months. I've really seen the effort that everyone has put in, but now it's the final push, you know. Um, now it's about the delivery. Now it's about making sure that the message of TCF it really goes to uh, the the uh, the various communities that we work with, uh, and inshallah, you know, we hope that we're able to do what we can uh, to try and get the message out there. Um, and with that uh, being said, uh, I did see near the auntie join, but I think we've lost her as well. Uh, so with that, so so with that, I uh, really want to open up. You know, of course, we have uh, Zia Sab, we have Adit Sab, um, for anyone to ask any questions, whether whether it's about Ramadan, whether it's about 
what's happening with uh, with the third wave uh, in Pakistan right now, or anything else about TCF, or if you just want to have a chat, you know, now is the opportunity. Um, if I can request, if you have any questions, to raise your hand, um, and then we can take questions uh, and then come to a close. Thank you, everyone. Are there any? So I think there was a question, uh, Ziasab, if I can. Uh, which was uh, with classes operating at or above capacity, how are you able to maintain social distancing within classrooms to ensure our children's safety? So actually, the the rotation schedule is one of the reasons why we're able to take classes or at least the enrolled number of students per class to where it is today. Um, we obviously have half the students coming up every day in the larger classes and in the higher classes where enrollment is lower number of students per class we don't need to uh, follow such a schedule so it is still on rotation and and uh, the students are coming every alternate day to to school but the number of enrolled students per class has really had to be um, had to be increased because um, because of the sheer lack of capacity uh, especially in the primary sections. I hope that addresses your question, Sarah. Yeah, thanks, Leo. Uh, thank you so much. While we're thinking of, uh, you know, other questions, one of the things that I really wanted to appreciate is the fact that um, I think we lost the sub um, you know, when his connection was getting disturbed, but really we, we expected the worst uh, same time last year. And, and even today, um, you know, these are uncertain times because while a big chunk of the world is uh, is seeing a light at the end of the tunnel in terms of vaccines, uh, Pakistan and, and some of the other countries where we do get money from, they don't necessarily have the same trajectory in terms of vaccination. So this may take years before it comes back to normal, if it ever really comes back to any kind of normal that we find familiar. And, and in that kind of uncertainty, having um, an ability to uh, sustain your program for a few months is critical. And um, not only were we able to sustain our program, but we were able to um, build our, our uh, you know, cash reserve such that we are able to sustain the program up to six months. And I think that has been uh, really only possible because of the incredible generosity of our donors, as well as the the, the absolute energy and passion with which all of you do what you do every day for TCF. So I really want to recognize the fact that, you know, both the staff in Pakistan and the teams of volunteers here in Pakistan and Europe and Middle East, you guys have been instrumental in, in bringing TCF to a point where we can stand by our teachers, where we can reach out to students in our communities and play this role that we hope to play, um, you know, over the next months and years. So love to take any questions if you guys have any uh, at this point about the campaign or about TCF in general uh, right now. Seems guessing... that you've done a good job uh, with all your communications because all of them <laughs> seem to have most of the answers available with them already and ready to uh, face their, uh, their donors and uh, uh, their people who are really the beneficiaries, whoever gives becomes a beneficiary himself. So it seems they're all well armed with uh, all your communication devices and, and information <laughs> and good communication, mashallah, your marketing team, Nasrullah, everybody, uh, they seem to be quite satisfied listening and uh, do we have any more questions? I wonder. I don't think it doesn't seem like it doesn't seem like it. But look, I think um, I think uh, we can come to an early close, which is always quite good. But, you know, I think what what remains to be said is that we wish you all well for your upcoming Ramadan uh, um, campaign. And obviously for the blessed uh, month of Ramadan as well, you know, we're wishing you and your families all the best. Uh, but if there is anything, Sana, I know that uh, I've been 
sending uh, you guys uh, a lot of uh, mails and whatever have you and for uh, the Middle East and for and, and even the team in Pakistan and the UK uh, if there is anything that you need you know over the next course of the next couple of weeks please feel free to get in like 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 in touch with myself with Aisha with 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 Anika um, and, and of course Yasab you know just so that we can try and help yourselves to to reach uh, and get the message out there to the communities as best as possible. So from my side, uh, thank you once again, and we will come to a close. Thank you. Thank everyone. you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Um, really thank appreciate you. Thank you, your role in this. And thank you, thank Atisa, you. for joining us. Always a pleasure. Thank you thank so you. much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you, you, everyone. Thank you, so thank thank you. Gretchen. Thank, bye thank bye. you. Bye. This is bye. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. 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 Thank you, Jasab. Thank you. Thank you.